What's up everybody? It's Carpo. It's early so I'm going to do my best to um, I'll do my best to get my points out on this video before I'm actually awake but uh, I just sat down to make this video and I actually ended up talking about dreams so uh, this will be really about the discomfort the the ranting and, and screaming and complaining about of people in general that uh, there's a lot of uh, disillusionment, there's a lot of confusion, and that it comes out in our behaviors. And uh, I've really been thinking about this a lot over the last few years. The complainers versus those who do, versus those who just ignore. And not asking myself which of those roads is the most useful or efficient, but if you're going to complain, first off, you have to have a solution. If you're going to complain about the way things are, you have to have something better to put in the place. And if you're going to ignore the way things are, and not do anything about it, and not speak your mind when you see problems, then you're probably just going to have uh, more problems thrown on your shoulders because you're ignoring things that bother you. Um, if you're ignoring them because they don't bother you and you think everything's just fine the way it is, then maybe that's just because you haven't looked deep enough. Or maybe you've looked so deep that you've realized all is fine. So there's two different lines of thinking on that, extreme different lines of thinking. You know, one person that may say everything is just so, it's the way that it's supposed to be. Another person may say, well, everything's just the way it is and I'm not going to deal with it. Majorly different approaches to it. And each person will be, you know, handling the situation differently. But really what I wanted to get the, to the root of is there's a lot of discomfort and complaining and we say it we see it mostly reflected on the internet because this is where people can go and dump their opinions that's where, here, that's where I dump my opinions um, and we see a lot of people who appear to have major issues with what's going on in the world the way what other people think what other people are doing meanwhile um, quite often some of the most spiteful of them will not have anything to put in the place of the current paradigm or the current system of operation. Uh, for example, those who claim that uh, we need to bring down the government. And I say, okay, well, what are we doing in its place? I say, well, we can govern ourselves. That's just not feasible in today's world. We just can't. We have too many things going on. We could over the long term, but right now it is the way it is and we have to deal with it if the government collapses on its own so be it but what do we do you know um, religion is a big one a lot of people are telling others what they should and shouldn't believe and um, this really got me thinking this morning about and the reason why I'm, I'm uh, making this video I guess is to kind of look back at history and say were we really as content as history makes us think that we were in the past I guess this would depend on the person. If you observe history as a, a series of countless wars where everybody was constantly fighting, uh, you wouldn't be alone because that's the history that we're taught. But you can split these times up between these wars, you know, these five, ten, even hundred year wars, and see the hundreds of years of peace in between where there were scuffles and arguments but that the peoples of the communities didn't argue against their uh, against their government the way we do at least not in the sense that they were out there trying to bring down the system and if they did they would often be <laughs> they would often disappear so anyway the the rabble rousers of the past those who were trying to change the paradigm um, they were around it's not like everything was just fine but there tended to be a much higher price to pay for speaking out against your own community or out against your own system or against the religion <coughs> and the thing is that the religion of states was uh, you know countries states villages whatever was forced upon the people more often than not so it was an issue of it's just like going to work um, and everybody at work is a certain way or believes a certain thing or 
or is really into football and you're not, you just kind of play along with them because you don't want to sit and speak out your speak your actual mind and say, oh no, I think that's a waste of time. Um, it's just go on and you just kind of humor them along. This is kind of what I think that many people did to the um, heads of nations, the heads of their communities, you know, who said that this is what you have to believe, and they just say, uh-huh, okay. Really, they'd go along with their life and do their thing. And under the darkness, under the guise of, of, um, of someone who's writing something else, they would encode this important information in texts ancient texts. Um, everything from the, the Bible and the Quran to the Bhagavad Gita. And, um, many of these ancient texts that were written and turned into Bibles, um, there were many more that weren't. And all of these ideas encoded the idea uh, of us being able to be more than we are. You know? Um, but people argue about that too. I guess what it comes down to, and what really the point of this video, is that the complaining that we have today about the system, the way we view the world as being messed up, it's nothing new. There have always been people who wanted to change the way that things are. The difference today is that we can open up our minds and our mouths on the internet or in the community, and nobody's going to speak out against us or kill us. Um, I always think of the of the some of the um, ancient mystical teachers who were burned alive by the new Christian church because they refused to renounce their practices and take Jesus as their one savior. And I remember this story of this guy that was burning on the cross and he said he still averted his eyes from the cross even when it was stuck in his face while he was engulfed in flames. He refused to renounce. Um, and I think that that's an important thing for us to remember. These people, these these martyrs for the cause, these are people who were killed, maimed, tortured, I mean some of the most horrific tortures you can imagine, merely because of what they thought. So when we talk about thought police today, <laughs> we don't know anything. I mean, today <laughs> if you execute someone for their religious beliefs it gets around the world in about two hours. Back then it was you would just disappear. You'd be a sack of bones on the side of the road. Because it was easier to eliminate the threat than to allow someone to think differently. And that was a major issue. You know, if one guy spoke out and said, we shouldn't go to war with these people, <laughs> same thing would happen. So, while we complain today about how we're losing our freedoms, I just shake my head at the idea that we really think that we can't speak our minds but I think it's more of a matter of we don't know what our minds want to speak. We don't know what to think. We're overwhelmed because of all the information out there. So don't be. Because the wiser we become, the easier it is to wade through that garbage and to cast it aside. You know? Out of a dozen YouTube videos, I might find one insightful. And ten years ago, I may have found five insightful. But I've moved beyond certain subjects because they don't serve us as a community or a society. They don't serve me as an individual either. Or they only serve the individual and not society. And that's another one. You know, if your practices are very selfish, then you're not living in the light. But if your practices are all about helping everyone else and not yourself, then you're not improving who you are. So everything's a fine balance, and history is not what we think it is. History is full of all kinds of horrible things, but all kinds of great things too. And the fact that so many great men and women preserved the knowledge to now and hid it so carefully and dedicated lives to it, we owe it to them to speak up on these issues. It's like the modern day witch hunt has to end and we have to get past violence to express our opinions. One can dream, right? <laughs> Take care, everybody.